All right, good morning, FF Church. All right, first of all, was worship not awesome today? I thought that was just awesome, awesome stuff. I love it. You guys are in for a treat today. It's going to be awesome. I love church, love family, and uh, you got to see a little few here just right before the countdown timer started this uh, outhouse race that me and some friends and family done, and you saw Tony in his spiky helmet and through there it was we had an awesome time and that's what we're talking about with these families we've had an awesome time over the past couple of weeks talking about family and when it comes to family we all have different families and we all have a different idea about what our families look like and with these families we kind of get this picture in our mind that maybe your family doesn't meet up to par and we had the per- picture perfect family you know and uh, my girls have been asking when I'm going to bring the dollhouse back home so it's going to go home today <laughs> So, uh, and maybe you're like, you know, here's your picture perfect family, you know. They got the nice house, and uh, I've got my family here. And this is kind of what we talked about the first week. We kind of talked about what a family, and here I got the mom and dad and little girl, and I got little Jojo here, the little dog. And anyway, you got your nice family and all. And then your family's not complete, unless you got a sweet ride, right? So uh, I'm going to bring out my little Cadillac Escalade. I'm not sure what your family ride is, uh, it doesn't matter. Prius, what, whatever it is. You can't get many people in a Prius, so. And then the, the next week, we talked about discipline and about how you have to discipline your kids. And then we was talking about how that, with that, whenever we have a family and that, if we make God, you know, if we make God the center, that all the family gets brought all together. And that's what we talked about, you know, the second week, about how that, whenever we elevate Jesus, it brings everybody together. He is the one that gets elevated. And then whenever we try to make it all about the kids, you know, they drag us every which way. And we try to make it about ourselves and we get drugged every way. But whenever we make it about Jesus, it brings everybody together in your family. And uh, that's what's awesome about the power of Jesus. And these are, these are all great examples. And then with that, there's one thing that you have to make the focus with Jesus. And we kind of symbolize this with, our, with the Bible, is that he's got to be the main thing in our lives. He's the forefront. He has to be the forefront. And where we define truth at, where we define our lives from, it's not by what your mama says. We love our grandmothers. We love the way they cook. And whether you like or not, you like that old people smell. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you are the old person smell, we love you. Um, we, we know what we're talking about. Like, you know that smell when you go into your grandmother's house, your grandparents' house, you're like, whoo, it hits you right in the face because first of all, their house is, you know, 15 degrees too hot. And they're chilling and it's 96 degrees outside. And we, we love our grandparents. We love them. And you just, you got this idea of family and we, we love them. And sometimes it gets complicated and sometimes families get messy. And then with that, we also have people that we kind of substitute. That's kind of what today is about. Like, who else do you consider family that's not necessarily your family? Like you've got, whether it be your best friend or somebody you grew up from childhood, you've got people in your life that you consider family, but not, they're not your family. And I know you know what I'm talking about. We've got these people in our lives and we can trust them and we can share things with them and we can grow old with them and we can go fish with them we can go on vacation with them and we call them up, we invite them over to the house, we fix them dinner, we do all this stuff. And a lot of times it seems like we can get along better with these other people than we can our own family. You know what I'm talking about? We got all these people in our lives. And maybe you're like, well, yeah, I don't I don't really really understand kind of what you're saying here. So to help relate this, help understand, I need three volunteers with cell phones to come up here. This is right, three volunteers with cell phones. That's all I need. Three volunteers with cell phones. I got three special chairs here. I need three volunteers with cell phones. Three volunteers. Who's gonna be our first choice? I heard somebody say, get up here. <laughs> Three volunteers and cell phones. Who's going to be your first one? All right, here we go. There's two. We need one more. We need one more. We got two females. Can we get another female? All right, we got another. We got three volunteers and cell phones. We're going to come up here. We're going to just have a seat. You're on display. And they're bringing their cell phones up here. This is awesome. We're just going to let you have your seat right here. And we'll let our third one come right over here. It's going to be awesome. Now, I'm going to make this real nice and simple. All right. So you, all I want you to do right now is you want to write, just write your first name and write your cell phone number. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to do the same thing when you get this pen. And you're going to do the same thing. I'll give you a pen. So this is going to be awesome because you're going to understand what I'm saying here. This is going to be great. 
Now, as we go through life, we have friends that have our cell phones. And you don't just give your cell phone number to anybody, right? Like you just don't want anybody calling your cell phone, right? All right, now here's what we're going to do. You guys have just exchanged cell phone numbers. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to write your number down. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Desiree, mm -hmm. I want you to send her a text. <laughs> we're doing all this live online. Welcome to Elthiff Church. You're first time here. We're playing with cell phones. <laughs> All right, you got your number down? Yep. All right, so you got her number down. All right, now here's what we're doing. We're going through life, okay? We've got people in life that we're going through life with, and right now, Desiree, she's sending, she's sending her a text message. Then we're going through life, and you send text messages. If you send text messages, raise your hands up. You send text messages to people. Look at how many people send text messages, okay? If you're on Facebook, raise your hand up. You're on Facebook. You're on Instagram. You're on Twitter. You're on Pinterest. Oh, my God. Okay, Pinterest. I still haven't understood Pinterest. I don't understand Twitter. Did you get a message from Desiree? Not yet. What? Oh, there it went. What would you say? Said, Hi. Heidi. Heidi. You didn't get a text message. No, I don't have service here. She doesn't have any service anyway. <laughs> this is even perfect. I have AT&T. <laughs> this is an advertisement commercial for Verizon Wireless. <laughs> All right, so let me give you your paper. All right. Now, here's what we're getting at. We've got people that we're going through life. Now, you respond back to her. Just say something else. Say you're whatever. You're on stage. All right, now, here's what I'm getting at, okay? We're going through life, and we're having all these friends. We have friends that we share things with. We take pictures, and we take selfies. We have selfie sticks, and we so you can fit everybody in together. And, you know, and then you have what's called the photo bomb. Okay, so we're going through life, and this is what we're doing with. And these are friends that we're doing life together with. But Miss Lisa's over here. She's not, she doesn't have service. <laughs> She's not involved. And so we have two different groups of people here. We have one group here, oh, they're communicating back and forth in text messages and selfies. Oh, BFF day and throwback Thursday, here's where we were, you know, in third grade. Uh, we're going up together. Lisa over here is like, I'm on Facebook and I'm seeing what all they're doing. They don't ask me. Okay, so Lisa, okay, I'm going to give them my number. Okay, so here, I'm giving you her number. But you can't do nothing with it because she ain't got no cell phone service. <laughs> so she's over here, she's like, well, I gave them my number, but they ain't ever called. They, 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 they ain't never called. And here, here's what we got to understand about, about friends, okay, about friendship, is that it goes both ways. The, the phone rings both ways. In a normal day, it would ring both ways. Today, it will not ring <laughs> both ways. So it's perfect. I want you to understand this. I had a, a friend of mine whose mom was depressed. She, she was retired. She was in her 80s. And she was sitting at home. And uh, her son came over to visit and said, Mom, how are you? And she said, I'm terrible. I've been sitting here for two weeks. My phone has not rang in two weeks. He said, okay. He went over and he picked up the phone. He said, Mom, your phone's working. You got a dial tone. I know it, but nobody's called me. So here's what he did. He got in her phone book. He caught up her best friend down the street and said, Hey, uh, my mom's wanting to talk to you. He said, Here you go, Mom. Here she is. So I don't want to... Oh, hello? They talked for two hours. Two hours. And all she did was pick up the phone to call a friend. We have these friendships in our life, but too many times we make them one side and we're sitting over here like, oh, they're doing all this and all this and they don't, don't have nothing to do with me. And we're sitting here in our parents' basement in the dark, you know, stalking people on Facebook and wondering why they won't call us. <laughs> well, first of all, you need to get a cell phone that picks up reception. Stand spot. <laughs> We make up these excuses and we blame them. Oh, they're best friends and they don't, they don't care about me. People do care, but you've got to understand when it comes to friendships is that it goes both ways. Both ways. You guys show some love to our volunteers. Coming. Thank you guys for coming up. It was awesome that you did have cell phone service. That was awesome. Thank you, Miss Lisa. Thank you guys for coming up. And I know that was kind of funny and kind of humorous, but I know that you all know what I'm talking about and we have friendships in life that are just that way. We can make up the best excuses in the world. Like, oh, and, and we'll say things like, oh, they don't care about us and they won't do this. And you're seeing those people with the, you know, doing the selfies and the selfie sticks and out on Boone Lake and doing fishing or whatever, going camping. And you're like, 
Where, 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 where do I fit in? Where, where is it? They're all happy and going through life and you're over here miserable. Or maybe you're the ones over here and you've got all these buddy buddies but you don't let anybody else in. How do we go through life with these other people? Because we were never meant to go through life alone. If you don't get anything else out of this today, that's what I want you to get. We were never meant to go through life alone. Never. Ever meant to go through life alone. We were meant to go through life together with people. Tony mentioned it earlier. The two greatest commandments in all the Bible. Love God with all your heart and love people. People. But we can't love people when we're got our arms crossed and completely unapproachable with the words buzz off stamped on our forehead. You're not going to make friends that way. <laughs> How can, we, how can we have friends? How can we go through life together? My, my fingers today, my fingers are raw. And my, my f other finger hurts because I hit it with a hammer yesterday. And here's what I was doing. I was helping a friend laying the flooring down. All I was doing that, we're friends. We're going through life together. We're helping each other. And you're like, well, well nobody calls me up. Does your phone work? Or are, are you showing yourself friendly? We're going to talk about this today and about other people. Because we need people to go through life together with. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open them up. And it's going to be awesome, awesome scripture. This is Matthew chapter 4. Some of my favorite in the Bible. Matthew chapter 4. We're going to be talking about some of the disciples and Jesus called them. And I promise you today is going to be awesome. This is Matthew chapter 4. And can I go ahead and say... For everybody that's on Facebook or your likes and your photos, your self-worth is not how many likes you get on Facebook. It's not about your photos. It's not about your photo bombs. That is not. It's a false self-worth. That is not your self-worth. But it is what you put into your relationships. Jesus knew this. And in Matthew chapter 4, you see where Jesus picked up these men that were his friends. And I love this. This is in Matthew chapter 4, starting with verse 18. I, I, can't, can't get, I just can't get the fact that Lisa had no cell phone service over here. I just, it keeps coming back. That's awesome. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 18. It says, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers. They were Simon. His other name was Peter. We know he changed his name to Peter. And Andrew, his brother. And they were putting a net to the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for men. At once they left their nets and followed him. In verse 21. Going from there, Jesus saw two other brothers. They were James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were sitting in a boat with their father, mending their nets. And Jesus called them. And at once they left the boat and their father, and they followed Jesus. Now here's where most of us are at in life. We're working. And here you've got these four men and they're working. And they're just working. They're doing their job. And they had an awesome job. They were fishermen. And because they were fishermen, they got to fish all the time. Many times they spent all night long fishing. And they would fish for fish. And as you're catching fish, you've ever been fishing, you have the opportunity to do a whole lot of talking. Or if you're guys, you just sit there. And you don't say anything. Because for some reason men have the innate ability to sit there and do something that requires completely no brain activity for hours on end. <laughs> I know, and, and women, I know you don't understand this because you're looking at it and you're like, what's wrong? You're not talking. I'm fishing. No, you're not. You're sitting there. I'm fishing. I'm thinking about nothing except a fish grabbing my hook so I can react and really... <laughs> Men have the innate ability to do this. A little bit different than women. And here you have these four men. Not only are they fishing as recreation, these guys are fishing for their money. They are fishing as an income. And they're doing work together. And here's where we're at in life because we're at work and we talk to people, we're working with them, and we're going through life with them. Many of us, we spend more time with the people we work with than we do our own families. Is that not true? You spend a lot of time with them. And you spend it all day and you get home where four, five, six o'clock in the evening. You spend maybe three, four, you know, hours with your spouse and your kids and it's bedtime. And you're going to go spend, you know, eight to twelve hours with these people at work. And that's what these guys are doing. Spending so much time of these, with one another. Working. Fishing. And if they wasn't catching fish, it was very stressful because they wasn't making any money. You're talking about stressful on friendships. Very stressful. So here they are, they're working. You got these two brothers. 
Peter and Andrew, and you got these other two brothers, James and John, and everybody's working. Working on the same dock, working on the same waters. You know that they're out saying, you know, who caught the biggest fish because that's what guys do. You know, mine's bigger than yours, or my boat's bigger than yours, or my net's bigger than your net. Uh Uh-huh. You like that? And that's what they're doing. Because that's what guys do. And they're going through life together. And this is what we were meant to do, is going through life together. And here's just a couple things about work and your work life, and maybe this will help you. And as you kind of see this with these men, because I picture these men as being something like on, you see that deadliest catch and so forth, and they're like, I mean, it's really rough work and hard work, because again, if they're not catching fish, they're not making any money. They've worked hard, and I encourage you to do that at your job, to work hard. Don't be the slacker, you be the one that works hard. Work hard at your job. And it doesn't matter if you require pushing buttons or answering the phone. You work extremely hard. Because you're going to be influencing the people around you and that environment. Work hard. And as you work hard, enjoy your work. Enjoy it. Yes, you're new in something and you're doing it for a job. But when you can enjoy your work and the people that you're around, man, it makes it for so much a better environment. Like, I, I enjoy going to my job. I work with, you know, great people and I, I, I enjoy it. Can you say the same thing about your work? Because many times it's not the work that we're necessarily concerned about. It's the people that we're around. You ever had to work around with the people that are just so difficult? They almost make you cry or want to do them bodily harm. I mean, they're just, they, they drive you that crazy. You know, man, if I hear one more thing about their dead cat, I'm going to scream. <laughs> difficult. And people are difficult sometimes to work with. And if we be honest, we're not all easy to work with. We all have good days and bad days. Enjoy your work. Enjoy your work and work hard. And this last thing I want to kind of bring out is that your work that you do, that's a mission field. Your work, you're spending so much time, that's a mission field. You have the opportunity at your work to show people Jesus by how hard you work and by how you treat other people. How about how the way that you talk about your boss or talk about your other co-workers? I don't know how many times, you know, you catch people to, you know, to catch their tongue. It's a mission field. That's your, that is your mission field. Right now we've got, we have a few empty chairs around us. It's to be your mission to get your family and the people you work with, your friends, the people you love and care about here no matter what it takes. You get them here. And I promise you that if you get them here, we'll do everything possible to treat them right, to love them, and let them hear a word from Jesus. That's our goal. That is your mission field. It's not just something you go and do every day just so you can draw a paycheck. If that's what you do, you're going to go through life hating your job and you're probably going to hate life. Enjoy your work. Work hard. And that is your mission field. That is your mission field. And these guys, they were doing their work. And here amongst, they were, they were, they were working, they were catching right here. What they were doing was fixing their nets, preparing to go fishing again. And up walks Jesus. How would you like to be at your job and working? And up walk the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I mean, don't you want to be doing your work, you know, a really good job? You know how it is already. You're kind of at work and you're slack. And you may have your feet up on your desk and your boss walks in. You're like, whoa, straighten up. And you immediately find something to do. Immediately. You're already grinning because we do this. What would happen if we saw Jesus walk up? Well, Jesus walks up and not only does he see these men, he calls these men. I love what he does. He, he calls these men. He calls them. And immediately they left their job. Immediately left their job. And I know what some of you might be saying. You might be one of those people here that says, you know what? I don't even like my job. I, I don't like my job. I can't stand my job. I hate my job. If that, if that is you, then I'm going to encourage you to find something else. There's a, a lady that I know that she loved her job. She worked at the job for years. It was set up. Everything was organized. It was like, I mean, it was like, it was her job. It was like it was her baby. And she loved it. She loved going to work. But then she got a new boss. And it made her job miserable. She dreaded work and dreaded it. And for months and months, it was nothing but a toxic environment. She loved her job. But because of this one influence, it drove her to the point where she actually left. She left that job and went to another. She got out of that environment. What ended up happening a few months later, that boss left. She, she went back to her job. And that's what I'm telling you. That if you can't enjoy going to work, if you can't enjoy the people that you're around, 
You've got to get out of there. Now, this is not an excuse to quit your job. <laughs> Do not do that. I am not saying that. What I'm saying is you work with that with everything that you've got until you can find something else. Find somewhere where you can fit and you can enjoy going to work. Yes, you have to work hard. And sometimes it's going to be sweaty. And sometimes it's going to be messy. And no doubt with fishing, it was messy. It was smelly. But up walks Jesus. He says, guys, you've been promoted. i got another job for you. Is that not what we want? Work your job so hard that the competition comes to you and says, hey, I want to offer you a job. That's what these guys did. Jesus wasn't going to call no slackers to go out to this mission field. He called the hardest working men, I believe, that these Bible had ever seen. Hard working men. And if you want God's very best for you and your family, then you better work exactly hard. I mean as hard as you can right where you're at. Because God does not call couch potatoes. He calls hard workers to do something even greater. So you work so hard so the competition comes to you to steal you away from that job. You work hard. And that's what Jesus did with these men. And if we don't enjoy our jobs, if we don't enjoy our work, then we're probably going to go home miserable and hateful and take it out on our spouses, take it out on our kids. You've got to save something for home. Did you catch that? You've got to save something for home. You work hard. You give it everything you've got. But when you come home, your work hat comes off. You have a wife, you have a husband, you've got kids you need to love on. You need to save something for home so you can get down in the floor and change Barbie dolls, diapers, and cars and trucks. Save something for home. When you enjoy your work, you can save something for home. Enjoy your work, work hard. As we're going through life and we're doing this, we're friends with these people. We're friends. And these Peter and James and John, all these guys, they were somewhat friends. They knew one another and they fished the same waters. I mean, they were acquainted with one another. That's why I love this Proverbs. This is Proverbs 18.24. I love this. Here's something about friends. We're talking about these co-workers. And a lot of times we're friend with the, friends with the people that we work with. I love this Proverbs. It says, There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. I love this. You want to know what a friend is? This is it. It's not somebody who destroys each other. We don't backbite. We don't steal each other's husbands and boyfriends. We are there and have each other's backs. That's what we do. That's why I love this. We don't destroy each other. We don't just get mad at somebody and start blasting them away on Facebook. If that's you, you need to stop. There's nothing holy about that. We're supposed to love on people. Love on one another. Friends don't destroy one another. They have each other's backs. I love this. A real friend sticks closer than a brother. A real friend. How many of us can say that we have real friends? I mean that would go through thick and thin for you. That you could call them up and it doesn't matter what. You can say, I need you and bam, they'll be right there. Do you have somebody like that? We need people. Yes, Jesus is your greatest friend. Jesus died on the cross for you and gave you a whole new life. And I'm not talking about Jesus right now. I'm talking about friends. People that we consider so close that we love them like we do our own family. Maybe we even get along better with them than we do our own family. We need people to do life together. We need them. And that's why I love this verse. We don't destroy each other. We're building each other up. We have each other's backs. I got told this twice this morning. Somebody said, hey, they call me brother and you'll hear that in a minute. I love you. I got you back. And you don't know what that feels like. I got you back. Who's got your back? Yes, Jesus has got your back. But he put us in life to do life together with people. Who's got your back? I like what King James says in this. Here's King James. And it says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that stick closer than a brother. If we want friends, if we want to have friends in life, then we've got to show ourselves friendly. We had Lisa over here, poor thing, had no cell phone service, but she had friends. She had friends. And they were over here, you know, selfies and ha-ha, Desra, Heidi, and all this stuff with the little smiley faces and cute stuff. And, but if we don't show ourselves friendly, we are not going to have friends. We, we, we've got to show ourselves friendly. And listen to this. If you never invite somebody to your house, you're probably never going to get somebody at your house. <laughs> right? We don't like when people show up by surprise. I had a book salesman come up the other day. We don't like it. I was outside with my shirt off and I was carrying a shovel. 
you would think that would say, leave me alone because I have a shovel. <laughs> but he perceived to talk anyway and I just had my shovel. I was like, buddy, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Well, let me show you this. <laughs> anyway, you've got to show yourself friendly. Not like, and we can kind of sometimes go overboard with it. We can. We can be too pushy. We can, we can try to put guilt trips on people. And like, like she could have tried to put guilt trips over here. Like, hey, you didn't invite me to go to the fire with you. Or you didn't invite me to go to that birthday party. And blah, 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 blah. And we can try to put guilt trips on people and manipulate people. That is not friendship. Friendship is whenever we show ourselves friendly. Love towards one another. Love. We show people love. We friend other people so they in turn can friend us back. We need people in our lives. We've got too many, too many bad things going on for us not to show people friendship. We need one another. And that's what I love about this verse. I love this. I don't... I'm going to brought my cell phone up here with me. It's 11.09. I got a text message from my dad that said, Love you, son. Is that not awesome? My dad's one of my bestest friends. This morning I was fixing to leave the house. Me and my wife, we always pray together before, uh, before we leave to come to church. And uh, I got a Facebook message from a friend of mine. He's at work today. He's at work today. And uh, he said, praying for you this morning, buddy, and the church. I hope you all have a good service. Man, what a friend. Is that not awesome? How do you get that way? Show yourself friendly. Love people. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by some awesome people, which we need to take the time to make sure that we say this. Be extremely careful who you allow to speak in your life. Be very careful about who you are friends with. Jesus didn't just go out and just pick anybody. He went out and picked these four men at first. These four men. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Hard-working men. Good men. You pick good men to be in your inner circle. You pick good people to be close to you. Not just anybody. Good people. A couple of weeks ago, we had some friends over the house. Good people. We, we thought that we had something in common because they have four girls. We have four girls. It's like we got a bond. And they know how we feel and we know how they feel. And it was awesome. We need, we need friendship. But unless we show ourselves friendly, we're going to find ourselves over here saying, nobody cares about me. How much effort are we putting into that? Are we showing ourselves friendly? You've got your relationship with Jesus. Praise God. Who are you going through life with together? We need people. That will stick to us closer than a brother. That have our backs. That will help us move. That we can go on vacation together with. That we can call them up when we're sad. And we can call them up when you and your spouse have just had a fight. Somebody that doesn't tell you just, oh, bad advice. But tells you good God the advice. That tells you, I'm praying for you this morning. That tells you, I love you. We need friends like this. To go through life with together. Do you do you have somebody in your corner like this? And maybe you're saying you do. I, I do. Well, that's that's awesome. Because we were meant to go through this life together and invest in one another. This is what Jesus did. He called these men and they were showing themselves friendly. They had each other's backs and they were going through life together. And Jesus poured himself into these guys. I mean, they got to hear him speak this great sermon on the mount. You hear this in the book of Matthew. They got to hear the sermon on the mount. These disciples, these four men, they saw Jesus walking on water. They saw Jesus call out a dead man from the grave. His name was Lazarus. Call him up from the grave. And they saw all this. They saw Jesus do all this stuff. He invested in them. And this is what we do with our friends. We're investing with one another. And I put it like this. Other people's lives should be better because we're in it. We shouldn't bring other people's lives down. We should enhance their lives. Others' lives should be better because we're in it. Are we enhancing other people's lives? Are we enhancing other people's lives? Now, we don't have to go through life and talk about the Bible all the time. I was at a baby shower last night. Yes, men go to baby showers. We rock. 
we went to a baby shower last night and there was two of the guys there we talked about Star Wars Avengers we talked about guy stuff we need people to go through life with together to show ourselves friendly this is what we do we need other people because this is stressful and we need people and I'm not talking about a replacement. I'm not talking about a substitute for your spouse. I'm talking about somebody to enhance your life so you can accomplish all that God has called you to do. Friends should enhance our life so we can accomplish all that God has called us to do. If we have friends in our lives that are toxic, we need to pray for that person and we need to distance ourselves from them. If you have a friend, if you have a relationship with somebody that is toxic, that drags you down, that every time you see their caller ID show up in your phone and you hit ignore, you need to start dancing yourself. Just start dancing yourself further and further. Pray for that person. Show yourself friendly, be kind, be courteous, but distance yourself from them. Because we are supposed to enhance each other's life. If you've got somebody that's toxic, be very cautious. Be very cautious who you allow to speak into your life. There's this example, this awesome example about these family, this, this family that Jesus talks about. And it goes a little bit further. These were his friends. These were his investment. But there was a time of transition. And that's what I like about this. This is in Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. I think this is, this is so funny and I can't but think that this is awesome. This reminds me of wrestling. Matthew chapter 12. While Jesus was still, uh, was still talking to the people, his mother and his brothers came and stood outside. They wanted to talk to him. Someone said to him, Jesus, now your mother and brothers are outside and want to talk to you. Now, let, let's just recap this. Jesus is inside a house. He's teaching about the kingdom of God. And outside, his own mother and brothers, his blood mother and brothers are outside and they're wanting to talk to him. So they send messengers into Jesus and said, hey, will you let, let Jesus know that his mom and his brothers are out here to speak to him? So here's his response. This is in verse 48. So Jesus said, well, who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And he put his hand out to his followers and he said, see, these are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does what my father in heaven wants him to do is my brother and my sister and my mother. This is where the church is getting the Bible and they start calling you names. Whenever you, you get saved and start coming to church and they start calling you things like brother or sis. And every time I think of this, I think of restaurants going, brother. You know what I'm <laughs> It's just, it's fun to say. And I walk through a house, you know, there's this song, uh, Mumford and Sons, and it's talking about brother and all this. And I go to the house, and I go to my wife, and I go, brother. And she'll just say, hush, I hate that. Anyway, I love going through the house and brother, brother. But anyway, this is where they get that in the Bible because it was a brotherhood. They saw these people that they were so close together. They were just like family. And God was their father. So that's why if you hear anybody call you brother or sister in church, that's why. They don't mean anything about it. They love you. God bless you. They call you brother and, and sis and all that. And here's where they get that from. But how would you like for your own mom and sisters and brothers being outside wanting to talk to you? And your response is, well, who is my mother? <laughs> and if I'm Peter, I'll be like, Jesus, she's right outside. But he says, no, these people, these people are my family. See, we need one another. And who is he talking about? His followers. He's talking about you and me. He's talking about us. He's talking about what we've, our common term for it now is called church family. People that we can do life with together, our church family. We need each other. And that's why I love church family. This is, we are a family. And there's ways, maybe you're here today and you've not gotten plugged in up at church. There's ways that you can get plugged in, that you can get even a deeper relationship. We love for you coming in on Sundays. There's, a, there's other ways that you can get a deeper relationship with other people. And you know that we all have friends. And maybe you have, you know, 2,000 friends on Facebook. But I bet you only are really close friends with maybe six people. Those six people, that, that's your close, that's your inner family. And that's what we're talking about with church family. We can have a grand people, we can have 300 people here, but my church family may be a little bit smaller. A church family. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Here is my family. Oh, I know my mother is outside. I know my brother is outside. But here, this is where it's at. It's right here. This is where it's at. Family. These friends. 
families and friends are the ones you can get together with and build an outhouse and go do a race. <laughs> we need each other. And we have fun together. There is a connection with the church family that you cannot get anywhere else. I want you to remember this. There's a connection with church family that you cannot get anywhere else because Jesus is the link. See, with my sister and, and my brother, my mom and dad is the link. But when it comes to us, Jesus is a link. And when Jesus is a link, let me get my tennis balls back out here. I thought that was going to be easier to grab. When Jesus is in the link, man, he brings everybody together. Because it's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about what car you drive. It's, not, it's about Jesus. He brings everybody together. When Jesus is elevated, it makes it awesome. This is what it's about. Jesus. Not anybody else. Even if we're united. We're together. All by Jesus. I have been saved and bought by the blood of the Lamb. The precious blood of Jesus. And that's what links us all together. It's Jesus. So we have people in our life that we're brothers from another mother. Jesus is our Father. And I am so thankful that He unites us all. You might think, I, don't, I can just go to church on Sunday morning. I, I, don't, I don't need this. I, I, don't, I, don't have to, I don't have to have this. I want you to look at what Jesus did. Jesus, he went to die on the cross. He had already been beaten. He was, he was hung on a cross. And this is in John 19. John chapter 19, verse 26. Jesus was on his cross, and look what he did. He saw his mother. You know, before he said, who is my mother? And look at this. He, Jesus saw his mother. He saw his mother and the father whom he loved standing near. This is John. This is John. John, the same John that he just called that was a fisherman. This is the same John who is standing right beside of Jesus' mother. Right at the foot of the cross, Jesus is up on the cross. Jesus looks down and he sees his mother. And right beside him, right beside his mother, was John. He saw him. And he said, he said to his mother, this is Jesus. Now, he said it's from the cross. Dying in agony and pain. Here's what he said from the cross. Woman, look at your son. Then Jesus said to the follower, talking to Jesus, he said, look at your mother. Jesus told John, look at your mother. From that time... From that time, the Father took her to his own house. How many friends do we have in our lives that from our deathbed we can look down and say, take care of my mama. That is a friend. Somebody you can look and you can trust. I mean, when death is knocking his door, when time has come to its end, that you can look and you can entrust your family or your kids to take care of my mama. And I can just picture him taking his arms around Mary, mother of Jesus, and saying, I got you. Comforting her. Those people, that is friendship. Those are the ones that we can go through life together with. That, when you hear the term, I've got you back, that's what it means. No matter what, I'm going to go with you all the way. I got your back. Do we have people like this? I mean, Jesus had these people. He had these people. And he entrusted. He entrusted. He had the care of his own mom to this disciple. I love my mama. She's sweet. She's precious. Don't ever make her mad. <laughs> and I've got people in my life that when it comes down to it, that I can say, take care of her. And they would do it. Do, do you have those people in your life? This is what's so important about church family. When we're all linked together and we're all focusing on Jesus, it brings everybody together. We got each other's backs. We can go through life with together. Unfortunately, there are bad things about church too. And I'm sure many of you here today and you've had bad church experiences. And I want to say on behalf of all of God's churches, I'm sorry for those experiences you've had. Because sometimes you find cliques. Sometimes, if you want to, you can come in here on Sunday morning. You cannot say a word to anybody. You can sneak right out. But guess whose fault that is? It, it's the same thing with, we had Miss Lisa over here. If we don't ever show ourselves friendly, then how, how, how can we have friends? We got to show ourselves to be friendly. We have to put something into it as well. It's like my friend with his mom talking about her phone. Nobody was calling. Well, you can do some calling yourself. We've got this two-way street that we're walking on. 
So we try our best not to have clicks. Usually we say from 10 until time to church to start, we talk to everybody that comes in here, all new visitors. We're trying to make an effort to talk to everybody. And that's why I love about this, that we need people. We need people. We need help. There's going to come a time in your life that you will need help. But who are you going to call? You call upon your friends. You call upon your friends. And that's what Jesus did. He called upon his friends. And there was a common bond that united them all. And that common bond was Jesus. And he unites us. I love Jesus. Where are you right now with your other families? Maybe, maybe right now with your work. Your work. We kind of start talking about your work and your work relationship. Maybe what it's time for you is to let the rubber meet the road and you just give it everything that you've got. And you work at that job. You quit talking bad about everybody. And you just give it everything that you've got. You be the bright shining light. If you're in that job state that's miserable, then you give everything that you've got until you can find something else. Find some way to get out of there and get into something else. But during the meantime, you have a job to do. Do it the very best you possibly can. You work at it just as you're working for Jesus. Maybe you're here today and maybe you need to start showing yourself to be friendly. Then maybe you're the one that's sitting in your mama's basement with your arms crossed and wondering why you don't have any friends. And it's time to start showing yourself to be friendly. Maybe you're here today and you need to get a little bit closer relationship with, with the church, with, with, with Jesus. If, that, if that's you and you want to get you know, more involved, maybe here at Uplift or maybe another church, well, we can help you do that. There, this till table when you leave today. You're encouraged to stop by there and they'll help you get plugged in. We need each other. We need people to go through life with together. We need this. My question to you is right now is, who do you have to go through life with you? Who do you have? Ultimately, we need one person first. And that's Jesus. So let's start right there. How is your relationship with Jesus? Maybe you've been slacking off on that relationship. Maybe your relationship with Jesus is like at least a cell phone. You're just sitting here waiting on Jesus to shine the bright light on you. But all he's waiting on you to do is make a phone call up to him. Just to talk to him. Because right now, you can make all the excuses in the world, but what excuse do you have on not calling on Jesus? Oh, I don't have time. And we got to do this. We've got to do this. But he has the very power to remove all that from you. He also has the power to give you a brand new cell phone to communicate. His blood. You can communicate right with him. Maybe you're the ones that, maybe you're too involved with your friends and not spend enough time with your family because we can do that too. How is your relationship with other people? Do you have that person that's got your back? Do you have somebody that you can go through life with together? And I'm not saying it has to be one person. It can be several people. We've got some people here at the church that I've known a very short amount of time, just for a little over three years, and they've come to be my bestest friends. And I didn't even know them a few years ago. But there's been a common bond that has united us, and that's Jesus. And I get to see them. I get to talk to them. We send emails throughout the week. We're sending Facebook messages. We're praying for one another. And it feels awesome to have these people that have my back. Do you have that? Maybe it's time to start showing yourself friendly to people. Maybe it's time for you to dive deeper into the church. Maybe today what your first step is, is get your relationship right with God. And that starts with Jesus. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. Father God, I pray right now through your Holy Spirit that you would speak into your people. That you'd reveal yourself unto us. You're the greatest friend that we could have ever asked for. And you've done so much for us that you died on a cross and rose again for us to give us life. And I pray God right now that you would speak life into your people. As you continue to pray, you're here today and your relationship with Jesus, it's been skewed. That maybe you've had bad things to happen to you or maybe be sin in your life. You've, got, you've had something going on. That your relationship with Jesus, it's been skewed. It's been affected. Today, can, you can recommit your life to Jesus or you could commit your life to Jesus right now. Just call on Him right now. Say, Jesus, I need you. 
to be the center and focus of my life. Come on to me right now and just pray this prayer right now. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Take my life and make me brand new. I accept you as my Savior for my sins. I know that you died and rose again for me. Take my life and make me brand new. Thank you for new life. Now you have mine. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. It's between you and God now. You prayed that prayer to receive Jesus as your Savior. I would love to have the opportunity to pray for you. Would you just slip your hand up and say, I prayed that prayer this morning. God, you're awesome. I pray, God, that you do an amazing, great work in and through us. And as we work and we develop our relationship with you, that you would set us on fire. As you continue to pray, maybe you're in that toxic job right now, or maybe you're in that job that you needed to work hard or show yourself friendly. I want to pray for you in your work environment. Nobody's looking around. I just want to pray for you in your work environment. Hands are already going up. I want to pray for you in your work environment. Did you just see your hand? We said, you just pray for me in my work environment. Hands are still going up. Pray for me in my work environment. I want to be a lot. It's tough. I want to pray for you. God, I pray for all these, all these people today, God, that their work environment may not be the best or, or maybe they need to start working harder. Maybe they're dealing with difficult people. Whatever that situation is, God, I pray that you would set them on fire, that they would shine bright for you, and that you'd give them the confidence and the wisdom to do your work in an amazing way. That as they're going through life and as it's going through, and maybe it might be difficult, that you would help them, God, to be a bright light for you. That everything that they do, they'd be working at it hard for you. And I pray, God, especially for those that may be in that toxic environment. That you would help them, God. Work hard until they can find a replacement. As you continue to pray, there's some of you here today. There's some people that you need to distance yourself from. That you've got, there's toxic relationships. There's relationships that may be bringing you down and dragging you down. I want to pray for you in those relationships. If you're in that situation, you have those relationships and you find yourself that might be toxic, I want to pray for you. We just see your hands I may pray for you. You've got toxic relationships around you. Hands are going up. I want to pray for you. God, I specifically pray for these people. That this toxic can drag us so down. It can even interrupt our relationship with you. So God, I pray, your, I pray God, your power upon them. I pray... I pray, God, your full armor of God, that you'd protect them from all the toxicity that these people may throw. And as they distance themselves, that they still might be able to show love, the love of Jesus that you have most graciously given to us. And I pray, God, for these relationships that somebody would, that these other people, these toxic people, God, would find a relationship with you and not get drugged down. God, I pray that right now you would set your church on fire, that we would go forth and that we would do a great work in your name. That we would continue to go through life together. And just like Jesus, we'd find people that we can do life with. And we would invest in one another. And together, God, we're going to spread the word about Jesus. I ask God that you do a great work in and through us. That we might be able to be so loud. May the the love of Jesus be so loud. Just by the way that we work. And by the way we lead our families. that That you would just change the lives of those around us. God, I can't imagine what would happen. If we would all be sold out to you just like those disciples were. And how you used them to change the world. God, we pray the same thing. That you would use us in an amazing, great way. I pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Would you give us some awesome praise? He is absolutely awesome. He's absolutely awesome.